Hi there, I'm Chris from Balloons Online in Australia and today we're going to talk about base plate design. It's an exceptionally important thing for our industry of course. Base plates are absolutely everywhere from disposable ones to larger heavy metal base plates that we use for larger installations or outdoor work. So I, I had a good look online to see what's currently available, what sort of resources we can find. There doesn't seem to be a huge amount which just goes through a little bit of everything with base plates. So Today we're going to talk about just the base plates that we use in our shop. I've been in the industry for about 16 years now. Uh, we've made lots of different types of base plates. I've seen different manufacturers with their products and uh, I'll just hopefully uh, give you some tips and tricks in what we do and, and how we do it. Alright, so now these here in front of you are the bread and butter that we use in our store for base plates. We've got our disposable base plates and our heavier metal non-disposable base plates. Now, um, of course, the, the, the most popular base plate I think I've seen in the industry are the IKEA knot lamps. I don't use them, I've tested them, I'm just not happy with them. I, I think that they're not heavy enough for what they need to be, and you, you're wasting a huge amount of um, patching, packaging materials and the top part of it, the lamp part, it gets thrown away. Um, to me, it's not very sustainable. Also, getting to IKEA can take a while. Uh, waiting in line uh, is not what you want to be doing on your day off. And it's relatively expensive. You know, I know it's, it's cheap, uh, but the stuff that I'm going to show you how I make my disposable base plates, I feel they're sturdier and they're cheaper. So we'll explain that in detail, how I make them. Um, then the metal base plates I haven't made. I've had them made for me by um, a, uh, like a, a metal smith. And what they've done is they've laser cut the, the platform. Um, the older ones I painted myself. It's a, like a, a, a special, um, what's it called, pot belly black. It's a special metal paint, uh, which is okay. You can see that one we've used a while. It's got scratches all over it, and it's, it's certainly not the best. But uh, most of the time, it's filled with balloons. You don't see it. We do have to keep repainting them. The next batch, I got cold dipped galvanized, which costs a little bit more. Um, it doesn't look as clean as perhaps you want it to be, but however, they won't rust. Uh, they, if they scratch, you barely notice it, and it, it's just a lot more durable. So we'll, we'll explain these. I'll even show you the drawings that I had, uh, with, that I commissioned the production of them. They cost me about 40 to $50, well these are a little bit more, but about 40 to $50 each in Australia. So I think that's, that's pretty affordable. Of course, you've got to work out your, uh, your own pricing. Um, get quotes, team up with some friends, get a couple made, maybe a balloon association, you can look to get them made in, in a larger quantity. This here is a 300 by 300 millimetres, work that out in inches, um, and this here I think is 450 millimetres, so uh, it, this is probably uh, not as large as the Aeropol system, um, but it's a lot cheaper and it works for us. So sticking to the metal base plates for now. Um, what we do is we've got a 12 millimeter uh, board thread inside the center of the base plates that I had made from the manufacturer. And the reason why I, um, that 12 mil works well is because you can get 12 mil threaded rod quite easily. So I actually buy that myself by 1.2 meter lengths. And um, you can see I've called what's called a butterfly wing nut. Just buy that separately and it screws on as so. And the advantage of buying the threaded rod yourself is you can cut it to whatever length you need. Now you'll notice that this is black. Um, just to explain a little bit about that, I've used an electrical uh, shrink wrap over the threaded rod. It just makes it look a lot neater. It thickens it up a little bit and it doesn't uh, burr the uh, holes as you put them on. So um, yeah, let's explain this in a little bit more detail and, I'll, um, and we'll get to the disposable ones soon. Okay, our metal base plates. So we've talked about the, uh, we've got our painted versions and our hot dipped gal versions. Um, what I did when I got them made is I uh, put some little felt pads on the underside. It just allows it to slide around without scratching the floors of, um, uh, especially, you know, a, a client might have tiled floors or uh, a surface in which shouldn't be scratched. So it's got some pads there as well. Um, that works really well. Now, the threaded rods, I described earlier, I have, uh, it's called a G12 or a 12mm uh, threaded rod and the corresponding thread has been bored into the base plate to begin with. So, you can cut them yourself. 
I've coated this with the um, electrical um, uh, housing, the electrical shrink wrap. And um, simply with the, the butterfly nuts that you get, it just means you don't have to use any shifters on site. Quite often you get to the store, wherever you're going, pop it down. You don't always have to want to get tools. So all I do, screw it in to, it's exceptionally important to make sure that you're not going to travel through past the base plate itself because now I've got another means to scratch the surface. So just come back a little bit, tighten the wing nuts, just hand tight and you're away. So likewise with a smaller base, you can always just bring it up next to it first, screw it in by hand. Okay, make sure you're not coming too proud and you're away. So the, the 12 mil uh, threaded rod works perfectly for 16 mil aluminium or even 16 mil um, uh, curtain rod, which is the top of that. So if it's locked on, that's a really nice tight fit. And uh, another example of just a curtain rod. It's a little bit looser because the rod itself isn't as thick, the, the outer skin is not as thick as the aluminium. So it's just a little bit looser, but that's fine. So I would use then a longer threaded rod because the variance between the base at an angle to the top at an angle isn't much. So it'll only just tip a little bit, which you won't even notice. But I find um, aluminium tubing to be, uh, so this is a 16 mil, I think it's a 1.2 or a 2 mil uh, thickness to be just as cheap as your lengths of curtain rod as well. And just lastly, um, here we go, an example, electrical conduit. So that's got a bit of a curve to it. So it's exceptionally sturdy. Um, what if you're framing with something that is, uh, the internal diameter is not large enough to fit the external diameter of your 12 mil threaded rod? Well, that's fine. You could just cable tie it on or I've just made a few of these where there's several cable ties, it's covered with uh, like electrical tape or duct tape. And that way you can still arrive on site. Tuck that on. And your sculpture can then just slot in as one. So that's how we do our metal base plates. Um, I hope it's helpful. And next we'll show you something a little bit more, in a little bit more detail, how to make the disposable ones. So here we are in my work shed. Apologies for the mess. I've spent a long time cleaning up, but it looks, still looks pretty messy. So I brought you here because I wanted to show you the cutting of the sheets of MDF themselves. We have uh, just a piece that I purchased from the hardware store today to test. It's 16 mil MDF. And this sheet is 1.2 by 0.6 of a meter. So they normally come in 2.4 by 1.2 meters but they're really, really heavy and it's quite difficult to move around. So you might need a roof racks or put it in the back of a big van. With these sheets that are pre-cut, uh, even if the hardware store doesn't cut it any further from this point, it's still quite neat, quite light and easy enough to move around. So what we're gonna explain is the, the cutting process and, and some measuring up and we'll, we'll then drill the holes. So first things first, here we've got 600 by 1.2 meters. So one, you know, we want to cut it down to a square, so I think 300 will work quite well. We'll go 300 along this section, cut it in half, and then 300 again, and we'll get four even sections of that. So let's measure up. So I'll make a couple of markings, 300, 600, 900, and then 300 here. If you make a few markings as you go, it'll make it easier to measure from this back line back. So I've got just a 1.2 meter spirit level, or you can get a straight edge or just a really nice straight piece of timber and work your way through those measurements, average it out, draw your lines. Now I only made one measurement here. because I can cheat and use this as just a really big uh, right angle um, straight edge. So I'm 
and coming back to all of my 300 lines. Now, of course, if you wanted larger squares, you just divide it by a different number. So uh, 600, unfortunately, you can only be divided by 300. But if you get whole sheets, I normally make some larger base plates of 400 by 400. So everything's measured up and we're ready to cut. So I've got a little cordless 18-volt um, circular saw. You could use a hand saw. You could use a um, compound miter saw. Whatever you've got lying around, this is pretty neat and it's pretty easy. Uh, MDF is quite easy to cut, so don't be worried about using a hand saw. It really won't take that much longer. Uh, so we'll just do it, go through a couple of different ways that you can cut it. So, I'll just clamp this down over the edge. And I'm just going to use this right angle as a guide. Don't forget your safety equipment. So that's one of the lines cut. So that's just our first square, and we can cut the rest of them. So one other method of cutting is you can use a uh, compound miter saw. Just going to get the dust extraction on. is you can always cut it by hand.
Okay, so you can see there's three different methods we can cut with. Use whatever equipment you've got. It really shouldn't stop you, the fact that you have to use a handsaw really didn't take that long. Um, next up, we'll have a look at cutting the hole. Okay, now we're going to drill a hole on our 300 by 300 millimeter base plates. I should have mentioned as well, so we got eight squares out of that one piece. That cost me about $14 for the piece, so we're talking less than $2 per square, which is very good. If you, if you buy a, a larger piece, which is a 1.2 by 2.4 meters, you get it down to a dollar, this is Australian dollars, per square. Um, exceptionally cheap, especially if you're comparing it to some of the other things like the knot lamps. So let's carry on. We're going to cut our hole. The first thing we want to do is find uh, as close to centre on our square, our square as possible. So the easiest way to do that is to just get a straight edge or a ruler, line it up on two corners that are opposite each other on the square, and just draw a straight line. Now get the other two corners, line it up, draw another quick line. So what we have is the point in which the two lines intersect is uh, very, quite accurately, our centre point. So we're going to drill onto that now. I've got a cordless drill with a 16mm speed bore. Uh, speed bores are very affordable, they're very quick as well, when, especially when you're cutting something that is uh, relatively large in a diameter. The reason why I use 16mm is most of the rods I use are also 16mm. So curtain rods or aluminium tubing, 16 works out to be quite a good measurement. Uh, they're readily affordable and uh, accessible. So 16, keep that in mind. I don't want to, when drilling, I don't want to drill through the, the bench that I've got. So use just something old as a buffer. And the next thing I'm going to make sure we do is we have to drill nice and um, uh, perpendicular, 90 degrees from the base of the board. Now this is probably the, the most challenging thing. People have got to this point before with different materials and uh, I've seen them buy little uh, attachments like steel attachments that you drill in. I think it's very expensive, it's unnecessary. So if we can get a clean 90 degree cut in the 16mm um, MDF sheet, that's quite adequate for what we need to do. So, this here is a little jig I made many years ago just on a scrap of wood. I cut nice clean edges in it and I cut a line that runs 90 degrees from the edge or that runs perfectly nice and plumb. Uh, so this is a 16 mil hole and I just use it to guide my speed bore when it, when it drills through. I'm guiding it based on where the, the shaft of the speed bore is such that it's centered on that hole. It's really simple. It's, it's uh, not going to give you a perfect 90 degree but it's the best thing that you can get when we're working quickly. So, just to illustrate again, we want 90 degrees from that point, and this will just help us guide that. So I'm going to push it through, set it on the, uh, on the axis of those two lines, line it up so that it's centred on the hole here that I've got pre-drilled. Alright, so that's it. Now, another little tip is as you, you're, uh, if you're doing multiple base plates at a time, and obviously that's the best way to do it, you can, you can get 20 or so done in a very short period of time, is when you're drilling every single hole, just line it up with another base plate underneath. So once you've drilled through, you actually start the next one. So you're going to have to then, you, you won't be able to, well you don't need to rather, mark your lines to find the center point, because I've just done that by lining it up with the edges of the one before it, okay? So you can do that for like five to 10 um, base plates at a time. You might start to get a little bit of error and that error might slowly transfer on after each one. So I wouldn't recommend doing it too often, uh, but certainly for a couple of base plates at a time, you can continue with that center line. Okay. So we'll head back to the shop and uh, we'll show you how to get those tubes in. Okay, so we're back in the shop now. We've cut our base plates. This is one of the eight and this is the larger one that we've had pre-made just as an example. Now, adding the rod, this is a little bit tricky. Uh, a couple of tips I can offer you here. Quite often, the 16 mil curtain rod or aluminium tubing is, uh, is, too, is not snug enough. 
okay? It's 16 mil, but as you've cut, there's been a little bit of variance and it just pulls out, you know? It, um, to me, that's, that's not good enough, all right? So a couple of different things I've done over the years as to how am I gonna secure this? Um, you could glue it, you know? You can add water around the MDF and it expands the MDF and secures it on. You might not have time for all of that. So this is something you might have lying around, a bit of hot latex. Uh, all you do, fold it in half, just to double the thickness of it. This was an 11 inch. Bring your uh, rod or whatever 16 mil tube you're gonna use over the top and just hammer it in. Now make sure you don't go too far because you don't want to damage the bench or you can use something else. A little bit more. All right, so you can see it's just on the edge there. The latex uh, amazingly hasn't popped, it really does. And uh, you can just see how sturdy that is now. Um, and it's nice and beautifully uh, 90 degrees and straight. So we'll get just another bit of latex which I had lying around. Put that in and I might use, it's a bit too tall, I won't be able to get to the top of the hammer. My aluminium and so there it's probably, you could fold it over again. So the thicker you make it, the tighter that will fit. I'll just show you. So even with those taps, it still hasn't gone all the way through. There you go. So that there is pretty tight. Um, and it's something you can do on site. You could quickly, if you have all your base plates stacked and, and you don't want to have it pre-made because it doesn't fit in the car or whatever it may be, uh, we do all our deliveries in vans so we can have the columns already made on the base plates ready to go and, uh, and deliver it. But it, you, know, you can just tap it in on site. It's not too loud, it's not too disruptive. Um, and uh, simple as that. I'll show you one other method on um, how we can secure it even a little bit better and, um, and we'll, we'll give you one more example, thanks. All right, so I've got this base plate 400 by 400 mil MBF um, with the 16 mil aluminium rod. It's in really tight, but what if I wanna make it just that little bit stronger? I might, for instance, um, have a arch going over the top of it with, uh, so that's 20 mil electrical conduit. It might be outside might have a little bit more weight. Just, you know, I'm just worried about it being a smaller, um, a uh, lighter rather disposable base plate and I just want to strengthen it up a little bit. So here's one extra tip. One cable tie and a cordless drill. So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna drill just above and below the uh, 16 mil aluminum tubing. And then we're going to drill through it. So the cable tie is going to go under, up, and through. Now it's definitely preferable to use an aluminium tube for something like this. It's just easier to drill through. Okay, so we'll go down. Uh, through the tubing. Might be a bit tricky. Bend it back a bit. Okay. And I'm just going to position it so that when I tighten the tie, it should just go. Set of pliers can help you tighten it that extra little bit. All right, now it's just going nowhere. So that's really strong. Now there's one other problem. I'll tuck that in there. Is uh, it's still pretty light. Now there's a couple of ways to get around this. You can add more and more mass, so more and more layers of MDS. But but then it starts to get a little thick, quite unpleasant. So I've got. Um, I don't have that. I've got 
some of these that I've pre-made. It's just an 11 inch filled to five inch with water. So it's, it's just a little bit of weight. And I've got two of them. And what I do is I'll just halve it. So you could use four 11 inch, but I just find this is a, a bit of a quicker method. All right. Bring it on there. Halve it again. and twist that around. Now the benefit of using 11 inch is they're sturdier than five inch. Um, but the benefit of using 11 inch hard, so you still get that extra strength of the excess latex, but you've got small balloons. So when we add a layer of four on top of that, it's actually gonna fit neatly over these balloons and you won't even sit. I'll, um, we'll pause the camera and we'll get some inflated and I'll show you. So we've got our base plate, our extra weight, we've cable tied it on uh, I've inflated some red balloons just to give a different colour, so I'll show you how we're going to hide these. But I thought this would be a good opportunity now to talk about covering our disposable base plates. I use I use a uh, like a synthetic cotton material. Um, I know a lot of people will use the plastic table covers, but that's fine. To me, it's a little bit cheap. Um, this material here I buy for I think 90 cents Australian per metre, and uh, it's very wide. You could even get two lengths out of it depending on the size of the base plate that you're using. So let's just go here. I've got black and white and I always keep in stock. It works great for any other colors. Okay, so two ways to do it. One is If I cut it big enough, <laughs> you can uh, fold it in, scrunch it up to the ends, right? And a little bit of ribbon or your first layer of balloons can hide that. I normally prefer, and this is why I cut it this way, to cut a little hole, just pinch it, cut a little hole there. And just bring it over. So we put a cable tie in this one, of course. So we'll just push that through. Now with cable ties, no matter what you're doing, I'd never cut the end. Because all that's going to do is going to create a sharp point that's possibly going to pop a balloon. If you're worried about it, fold it back. A bit of gap attack. Um, to me, I'm not worried because it's going to be hidden with the layer of balloons, okay? So, bring it down. And at this point, you could get a hot glue gun out and glue it together, or, oh, there's a bit of tape. It depends on what you're using it for. If it's gonna be outside or in a retail environment, and it's gonna be used for a while, I would never use something like this tape. I would, I would glue it. The great thing about hot glue guns is it will um, get absorbed in the fabric and absorbed in, in the MDF material itself. Just like it's Christmas all over again. Okay, so what I like about this method, um, it's really neat and sheer on the top. So um, let's, so before when I explained, I, I put these uh, water weights on the base, uh, but the best way to do it actually is to put your first balloon layer on. Usually square it off in line with the base plate itself and then get your water weights. Now I would have normally done it in red to match, but I wanted to do it in a different color so that you could actually see just how clear, how uh, 
it just fits perfectly in the weights in between the layers at this size. So it's quite heavy there. Okay, so it's quite difficult to see because it's hidden in there. So if that was red, then um, you've added a lot of weight, you've got a beautiful looking base plate, uh, very professional, very sturdy, not go anywhere. That could even double as the start to a conduit arch. Ugh. Wrong side. Okay. Um, and uh, I love that. I think it's fantastic. Okay. So we've got a couple more things. Stay tuned. All right. One more little tip to add on uh, talking about bases is um, exactly the same method, but we could use these as topiary bases. So what I've got here is a little bit of 16 mil melamine. Uh, I actually have heaps of this as an offcut from a kitchen we had made. So any of the uh, like cabinetry makers or um, similar hardware stores that cut melamine will be throwing out cuts like this or, or, or bigger. Um, and you can come and collect it absolutely for free. Chances are that might even cut it for you. It works great. With, with topiaries, uh, box topiaries or, or any other variation, you could, you could always wrap it in a, in a material or a foil. Um, the, I love this because it's got a bit of weight to it. A box by itself, if you just sort of put this on a, on a cup and glue it in, to me the glue always can break. Um, it, it's, uh, the box is very light. You've got to add something to it to give it a bit of substance. So this does everything in one. So let's just go through the points one more time is uh, we've got to find our centre line. So go from corner to corner, just with something that's relatively straight. Corner to corner, we've got an X. Okay. Now, we just drill in. Now, I'm not using a guide this time. Being a topiary, it's so small, it's easy to do it by eye. So start drilling, look on both sides. I don't want to drill through my bench, or my hand. You could, of course, have a bit of scrap lying around and uh, drill through that, but I don't. So I've just uh, cut uh, five mil or five and a half mil and it just fits my piece of dowel perfectly. So that's stronger than any glue you'll get. And in that goes inside the box. So you could glue that, that um, piece down or if the piece was cut perfectly to the box, it'll just be wedged in and, and then you can create your topiary off that. All right, one more tip. See you soon. Okay. so. Last thing I'll show you, just say you want to create the heaviest, largest base plate that you can possibly put together quickly. And you've got some of these guys lying around. So uh, you can actually screw one base plate into another base plate using the same threaded rod. So there are 12 mil holes that have been threaded in with a 12 mil rod. Um, simply, all you do is you overlay one base plate on top of another. It could be two heavy ones on top of each other. And get your threaded rod with enough length Screw it for the first one, and then through the next one. Now one little thing is that the top piece is a little bit loose, so that itself acts as a bolt, just by turning the base plate itself, and still make sure it hasn't gone through. So that's probably as far as it'll go, maybe a bit more. Maybe bring that back there just so it looks neat and screw it off. So that's one way of creating a super duper heavy base plate from these same uh, designs that we have. So look, I really hope you've enjoyed the tutorial on base plates today. Uh, my name's Chris Adamo from Balloons Online in Sydney. Have a lovely week.